previously we talked about hypothesis testing for a single mean, and now we're going to move into comparing two means by a hypothesis test. All right, so we know that when we were doing a single mean, we needed to come up with some test statistic, and then we needed to know the sampling distribution of that test statistic. So the same thing is going to apply here. We're going to need to come up with a test statistic, and then we're going to need to um, figure out what the sampling distribution is for that test statistic. All right, so let's kind of set things up. So first, if we have two means, then that means that we're going to be sampling from two distributions. So suppose we have two distributions. One's a normal distribution with mean mu x and variance sigma squared x. And the other one's a normal distribution with mean mu y and sigma squared mu y as its variance. OK, so let's take a random sample of size n from the first distribution, and then independently take a random sample of size m from the second distribution. All right, so we know that x bar is going to have a normal distribution with the same mean mu x, and of course the variability, the variance of of x bar is going to be sigma squared x divided by n. OK, so that's basic information. We have known that from um, probability. Similar thing is y bar is going to have a normal distribution with mean mu y and then variance sigma squared y divided by its sample size m. All right, so we know this distribution of x bar. We know the distribution of y bar. And we know that x bar and y bar are independent. So we can figure out pretty easily the distribution of x bar minus y bar. All right, so x bar is normal, y bar is normal. If we have a normal plus a normal, we end up with a normal. OK, so x bar minus y bar is going to be normally distributed. Now we just need to figure out the mean of x bar minus y bar and the variance of x bar minus y bar. All right, the mean of x bar minus y bar. Let's do that first. Expectation of x bar minus y bar, let's use the linearity of expectation. We end up with x bar to the expectation minus expectation of y bar. So this is just mu x minus mu y. All right, now let's do the variance of x bar minus y bar. And here is where it's going to be useful that we took these two samples independently. Because the variance of x bar minus y bar is just going to be the variance of x bar plus the variance of y bar. And then we don't have a covariance term because we took x bar and y bar independently. So we know that the variance of x bar minus y bar is going to be the variance of x bar, which is sigma squared over sigma squared x divided by n, uh, plus the variance of y bar, which is sigma squared y divided by m. So putting this all together, we know that x bar minus y bar is normally distributed. It has mean mu x minus mu y, and its variance is sigma squared x over n plus sigma squared y over m. All right, and of course, if we wanted to standardize this, we could do x bar minus y bar minus its mean divided by its variance, the square root of its variance. And that would give us a standard normal distribution. So we have a sampling distribution for x bar minus y bar. And this will come in useful when we do our hypothesis testing. OK, so suppose that we want to test the hypothesis of are these two means equal? In other words, we want to know is mu x equal to mu y? So what our hypothesis is going to be, what our null hypothesis is going to be is the two means are equal, or equivalently, we could write it mu x minus mu y equals 0. And of course, we need to specify our our alternative as well. And we know that we could have three different alternatives. We could have the two means are not equal. We could have one mean being greater than the other mean. Or we could have it the other way around, where the other mean is greater than the other mean. So the two means are not equal. Mu x is less, mu x is greater than mu y. Or we could have mu x is less than mu y. So choose one of these to be our alternative hypothesis. So regardless of what the alternative hypothesis is, we need a test statistic. And what we would really like is if we could use this t test statistic here, because we know it's sampling distribution standard normal. So let's go ahead and rewrite this, but take into account the fact that our null hypothesis is mu x minus mu y equals 0. 
So we copy this down, we get x bar minus y bar, and then this term in parentheses is just going to be zero because under the null, the two means are equal. And then we have our denominator, which is the square root of sigma squared x over n plus sigma squared y over m. So if we knew sigma squared x and sigma squared y, then we could go ahead and use this test statistic, and we would know this test statistic has a standard normal sampling distribution. But as we know, usually variance is not known. So if we don't know sigma squared x and sigma squared y, what are we supposed to do? Well, a logical thing to do would be use the sample variance. So the easiest thing to do is if we assume these two variances are equal. We'll assume sigma squared x is equal to sigma squared y. Then we can just calculate what's called a pooled sample standard deviation. So to get the pooled sample standard deviation, we're going to take the, var the sample variance of x, multiply it by n minus 1, and then add to it the sample standard deviation, sorry, the sample variance of y, multiply it by m minus 1, and then divide by the total sample size. So total sample size minus 2. So we have the sample size of x plus the sample size of the y's minus 2. So this whole quantity there, that's what we're going to call our pooled sample standard deviation. Okay, so it's pooled because we've like pooled all the information from x and information from y and come up with one sample standard deviation under the assumption that the variances of the x's are equal to the variance of the y's. All right, so we have our pooled sample standard deviation and we're going to use that in place of sigma squared x here and sigma squared y here. So if we plug in our pooled sample standard deviation, then we can recalculate this to be just x bar minus y bar minus zero, uh, divided by the pooled sample standard deviation times the root of one over n plus one over m. All right, so this is the test statistic that we're gonna be using. And what is its sampling distribution? It's gonna have a t distribution with n plus m minus two degrees of freedom. All right, so number, the sample size of the x's plus the sample size of the y's minus two. That's gonna be the number of degrees of freedom on our test statistic, on our sampling distribution. All right, so this is what we're going to use. We're going to be assuming that we do not know the variance, and so we'll be calculating that pooled variance and the whole idea here is that we're going to be trying to test whether two means are equal. And th all of this that I wrote down, that applies whether we have this alternative hypothesis that the two means are not equal. It could apply whether we have this alternative hypothesis that mu x is less than mu y, or we can use all of these calculations under this alternative hypothesis that mu x is less than mu y.